I have a problem reading reports of consultants. <laughs> I'm a consultant myself, but that comes later. Uh, stacks, stacks of great advices end up dead because written in prose as if not meant to be read. Now, my advice is try poetry. Its universal force is as stunning as its utter absence in any serious report. Prose is overrated, over-serious and over-regulated. The Pope is more spontaneous and Prozac-free than the formalities paralyzing executive summaries. So, save your mouth full of watertight prose for the appendices, please. Postscriptum. Stop waterboarding readers who victim your, par your dyslexia provoking literal overdose. If memos and reports should be concise, resonate, activate, steal hearts and renew our eyes, one wonders why instead they're often big fat files that fail to impress. For conservative reasons, poems are labeled cryptic, unserious, and unsuited for the adults-only industry of consulting. But the opposite is true. Poets decrypt the most complex and disclose meaning not just for the adepts, but for a global audience. I'll show you how we in Wikipedia, try to prosify what love is. Love refers to a variety of different feelings, states or attitudes, ranging from blah de blah to conclude that this makes love unusually difficult to consistently define. <laughs> My point exactly, yes. Now, let's compare poetry. Love is like a window in your heart, for example. Now, as consultant myself, it never really occurred to me to versify what I concluded and send it to the client, no. Until I started teaching at a minor consultancy here in Delft, my job was to unlock creativity in writing. So I distributed some summaries of reports and said, make a 160-character poem, an SMS, out of it. Saying just that killed everybody's creativity. And you know why? These texts, my students said, are inaccessible. Ugly, long and winding. It's a sentence to read these sentences. And it's true. It took my students 50 minutes to come up with a 160 in plain but swinging language, pitching the same report but then to the point, powerful and heartfelt. And my students were no poet laureates, yet no one accepted was able to produce good enough poetry in which form adds meaning to content, rhythm guides readers' interpretation, and the catharsis catches the message as a whole. But I owe you more examples. Here is Van Rompuy speaking. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to take another opportunity for some opportunity, blah, blah. The Obama of Europe. But my point, <laughs> it is not him, but this prose that does not excite, because his haikus, they shine like stars in the night. Two, ocean acidification is one of a number of stressors affecting the ocean's ecosystems. This matter of fact is essentially something that worries the IPCC heavily. Then why does it take Al Gore to alarm me with poetry? Vepers rise as fever settles on an acid sea. Neptune's bones dissolve. Now, that's the message. The Commissie Davis evaluated our support to invade Iraq. It became a meaty report about international law and legitimacy, but in sanitized language, of course, without the blood spilled and the torn flesh. Compare Ramzi Nasser, 
addressing our former PM, J.P. Balkenende, saying, so, J.P., how does it feel to tell a lie and see it surface later as a headline? How does it feel to sit at Herod's side, killing hundreds of thousands of children for just one king? International law. Counselors and consultants, let your rattling fingers on keyboards fall silent and linger. Take time to find words that tick, tickle and stick. Stop stuffing dead letters and all that not matters in justified paragraphs piled up in paper packages. To advise is to convey, to let your readers see what is to say. And that is an art. So write yourself a window in your heart.